a story about failure to tell you. A story of me failing and how it changed my life and for the better. Hi there, I'm PJ from fitnesswithpj.com and I help women over the age of 40 reclaim the tush of their 20s. And why do I do this? <laughs> well, I've been a trainer and a coach for 25 years now. I'm 50 years old myself, and I know that there are women out there who want to get fitter, feel better, reclaim that tush and more muscles with advice from someone who's in the trenches with them. If you're watching this video, nod your head if you agree with me. By the way, if you haven't already, I would really appreciate it and it would be super duper awesome if you subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. You can do that just down there. Hey, this way I can get more tips and more workouts your way to help you live a fearless life over the age of 40. Now, why am I here today to talk about my failures? Or more specifically, why should you even care? Because fear of failure is a total buzzkill when trying to move forward and achieve your goals. And that can be any goal, fitness or life. My hope is that by sharing my personal story with you, perhaps you will rethink something that you have wanted to do, but might have resisted because you were afraid of failing. My hope is that I can show you that sometimes failing is effing awesome. Now first, let me be completely, totally, utterly clear with you. We don't actually fail, ever. Failing is a mindset and I want you to get rid of that. Instead, what we do is learn. Now I'm going to dive into my own personal story first and then offer you three tips that helped me overcome my failures and allowed me to keep on learning. Yes? You are ready? Awesome. Let's dive in. Okay. 15 years ago, I sold a personal training business and it was the largest of its kind where I live. I had a team of 15 trainers, reception staff, we were incorporated, it was making money, it was the cat's ass. Until one day, one of my personal trainers photocopied my client list, partnered with one of my members, he was the money, enticed half of my other trainers to join them, and then opened up a studio directly across the street. True story. In the course of 60 days, our revenue plummeted by 75%. Yep, who knew fitness could be that cutthroat? Now, the stress at the time was unbelievable for me. And it really, it was the money, the money was the stress, but it was the trainers that left me as well, because I truly thought that they were my friends and it really broke my heart. However, I had a support group, my loving husband, LH, and I had a coach at the time. And it was through that coach that I was able to sell the business. And I can report today not, that not one of those trainers are still in the industry. And the one who opened up a studio across the street from mine, well, their money man left them because they never reached the revenue targets that they projected. And I can also report that he is not in the industry anymore either. Now at the time, People in my area thought I was a failure. Uh, we live in a smallish community and, uh, you know, I'm kind of no one around here. I wrote for the paper. So it, it didn't take much of a genius to deduct what had happened. But I am so glad it happened because it started me on my journey to being online. If I hadn't experienced, if I had not had that experience, I would not be sitting here right now with you. This trainer opening across the street from me was a pivoting point in my life that changed the direction of where I was going. And oh my goodness, it has taught me so much. Now, my next failure happened just last month. <laughs> I used to have a boutique fitness studio and it was called The Studio, aptly named, and we were a small group uh, fitness studio. 
and it was very successful too. I had a brand new team there, a manager, things were humming along pretty good until the pandemic hit. Uh, due to social distancing protocols, we were forced to shut our doors and then we were live streaming our classes. But since I had already had a business in the past, the one I was just telling you about, that ran low on cash flow. See, learning from my past experiences, not failures. I knew that I did not want to be under that type of stress again. And if you have a small business, you know what I'm talking about. So I crunched the numbers for our business. I also talked and reached out to a number of people who are smarter than me and asked for their opinions. I took a hard look at the industry and I decided to completely close the business last month. Now again, on the outside, it looked like I had failed and I was forced to close. I can assure you, I was not forced. It was 100% my choice. And I can also sit here right now and tell you that I cannot remember a time in the past four years while owning the studio of ever being this happy. Yes, I liked the studio. Yes, I liked the people. But it wasn't until I shut it down that I realized I love being online more. And that really trying to do both in these past four years was killing me. So that is why I am so happy I failed with the studio. Of course, each of these experiences required a few things to help me process my feelings and help me move on. It didn't happen magically overnight. So I'd love to share with you these three things that helped me. Perhaps they could help you. First, I highly recommend that you have a support group. Have at least one person in your life that you can talk to, who's in your corner, who will give it to you straight, that's important. And if you don't have that person, rent someone. And by that, I mean hire a therapist or a coach. I've done both and they have both been life-changing for me. Second, don't worry about being afraid of failure. Instead, be more fearful of not trying. Don't give your future self ammunition for a pity party because you didn't try something because you were afraid of failing. This is a big one in my playbook. I do not want to have future PJ pissed off at me for not doing something because I was afraid and I didn't do it because I was afraid of failing. In fact, I'm more afraid of her than I am of failing. And finally, Remind yourself that you are going to be okay no matter how the cookie crumbles. As long as that cookie's chocolate chip, just saying. No, in all seriousness, when these moments that I just touched upon happened in my life, my daily mantra for real was, I'm going to be okay. Because you will be. And as that cookie is crumbling, smile. Remind yourself that you're tough and that you will get through this and that tomorrow will be better. And if not tomorrow, then the day after that. You've got to rev up the self-talk in situations like this because you will believe whatever the hell you tell yourself. So tell yourself to be happy. Choose to be grateful for all the good things that you do have and for all the problems you know that you don't have. Life is filled with screw-ups. And I truly believe that we are supposed to fail sometimes. I believe that the cards are stacked that way. So embrace these moments, learn from them, and then maybe use them as pivots like I did to change the direction in your life. Now it's your turn. Have you ever been scared of failing? Do you have any other thoughts or comments about this video? I truly would love to hear from you. Leave a comment down below and share something with me. And if you enjoyed the video, hell, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And don't forget, if you are new, subscribe to the channel before you leave. Now, if you've come and visited me a few times, and if you haven't already, I invite you to join us on Patreon. The link is down below in the description box. 
and it is due to the amazing people on Patreon that we are able to keep this channel going. And guess what? I have a ton of perks just waiting for you when you join. Thank you so much for watching. I am truly grateful and much love to you. Mwah. Oh, and if you're wondering, why is PJ wearing a hat? <laughs> I got three words for you. Bad hair day. <laughs>